Hi guys, just wanted to talk to you about knocking in. Uh, I've got here my uh, beluga that I bought and I've actually been knocking in, this in for a couple of hours. There are many, many videos on the internet. There's many, many variations of how to do the thing or whatever. They're all basically doing the same thing and that's when you're trying to prepare a bat, you're creating a hard surface that the ball can rebound off. Now, as far as rebound goes, um, you can, if you use a soft bat and a ball hits it, you get less rebound. If the bat surface has been hardened, and depending how good the quality of the willow is, we instantly get rebound because it's hard. So that's what knocking in is about. It's trying to harden the surface to prepare it for uh, the damage a cricket ball can do and also to create rebound for the ball to go off. And when you've done it right, you should have a nice consistent bat that will ping where you need to hit it. So the first thing that I did when I uh, received the bat was I got some sandpaper and I sanded it, give it a light sand on the area that I'm going to oil it on the face. My preferred sanding method is to go up and down sideways and then finishing around and then straight. So I'm going up, sideways, round, finishing straight and I work my way down the bat all the way to the end. That would take any wax or um, polish that they've left on the bat. And then oiling. I use standard uh, Bunnings raw linseed oil, always raw linseed oil. Pour that on until it's about the size of a 20 cent piece uh, or an inch uh, in diameter. And then with my fingers I spread it out all the way. Any exposed timber we're oiling. Not the stickers. If you get any oil on the stickers, wipe it off. Come down here. Do your edges. Really important. If you've got a toe, you'll do the toe probably a little bit heavier. Uh, and you'll do the toe probably two, three, four times as you go through. Uh, I would oil the bat twice, 24 hours apart, and wait 24 hours before I do anything. This particular bat is oiled, pre-oiled out of the factory. They give it one oil. Um, they do it with a sponge. You can use a sponge. Basically, you don't want to have something that's actually absorbing the oil rather than the wood. So you're trying to put a layer, not pooling, but a layer of oil, particularly on the hitting surface. Any additional you can put here. Uh, just avoid the stickers. So what the oil is going to do, it's going to seal in the moisture that's already in the bat. It's not going to add moisture, it's just sealing it in. Um, you can soften a bat too much if you over oil it. So I would probably say the maximum I would do a bat is three times uh, with that method. And what I'm checking for once I've finished oiling and I've waited 24 hours is that when I run my finger, press my fingernail against it, I can see a little um, smudge of oil coming out. And that's enough for the knocking process. Okay, this bat was done a few weeks, oh, a week or so ago, so it's, it's absorbed in. It's really softened the bat. So the longer you can leave it after you've oiled it, the better it will be to knock. If you, oil, if you start knocking too early, you can crack the bat. Now the first thing you do is before you start knocking is you roll the edges. This is just a piece of cherry wood, a little uh, rolling pin which I've just put some nails on the side and cut a little thing out of a 4x2. So I'm just rolling over that. You can use the rounded edge of a melamine tabletop. Initially don't put too much pressure on it. Just go up and down and check it. If the bat's too dry, uh, and that's not your fault, if the bat's too dry it can crack. And you're not rolling um, extra tech or fibre sheets. You don't do this process on those types of bats. So we're doing both the edges when we're starting. I'll probably give them 10 minutes each of, of uh, rolling and they're ready to go. Okay, now knocking. First thing you're going to be doing is using some type of mallet. Now if the mallet's got a round head like this, 
irrelevant how heavy it is. If you hit it too hard, too early in its cycle, where you haven't compressed this surface enough, or it's a soft press bat, or under press bat really, then it will crack. So you just start off very gently. Try to be really consistent with your swing. And you're just going over the entire surface of the hitting area. You can come up here as well. We're not going anywhere near the edges. Edges are slightly different. And we're just doing it consistently. And we're going to be doing that whole process there for roughly an hour. And that's just going to say to me, all right, I'm ready to start the, the next phase, which is, is to put a little bit more pressure. Now, when I get, I've done that, then I start doing the edges. Now, as far as I'm concerned, after so many times, I go at like a 45 degree with a glancing motion, and I'm very gentle about it because the edges here will, will compress very easily. So this is maybe 30 degrees. Some say you go like this. It's irrelevant as long as you're very careful when you're doing it initially. So some parts of it will be really soft, particularly with squared ed edge batches, bats, they'll, um, they can crack really easy. I don't tend to go like that, that way. I just tend to go 90 degrees with the round part of the bat. This is another mallet. This is a lot heavier. So I just come down the bat like that. I'm not knocking in this part of the bat here. If I try to do this glancing thing, it can work. It's up to you. If you've got a way you feel more comfortable with, you do it however you think. But the most important thing is just be very even on your hitting when you're coming down either, either edge. And slowly but surely you'll see it start to compress and just take that down, that compression all the way down and just start it again. Don't go too deep on a particular section because what will actually happen is the wood will separate from the side that's not compressing and it will just crack. Um, same goes if you hit too hard you'll just do a compression crack. So what we're doing here is we're trying to stop that compression crack. Now the compression uh, crack happens a simulation of a compression crack using the LV mallet. So if you can see there, those few hits there, they've really gone in deep. And with Willow, if I went in so deep so fast, I could actually break those ends off and the actual structure of the, the Willow will crack inside underneath, even beyond where you can see it at the surface. So we're not trying to do that, we're trying to gently take it down and evenly compress it. You can see that there. Now this LV mallet is quite good. I can actually use the LV mallet to compress the head of my knocking in mallet. That's how hard lignum vitae is. Anyway. So that's what you're basically doing with the edges there, and you're basically taking them down to the point that they're not going to compress anymore. You're going to focus on this area of the bat, this last 20 centimetres, particularly on bats that are really heavily bowed, and that's obviously where we want to put most of our effort, uh, because on all bats, regardless of whether or not it's a straight flat press or a bendy press, they're going to be much softer near the toe. So you'll find you'll get your most compression around this area here where it's got the least vibration and a well pressed bat shouldn't need too much in the actual centre of the bat because that's where most of the, the press has done its action. When you think you're ready grab a ball mallet or a fairly new ball in your hand or in a sock or whatever and with the seam part of it gradual hit over the willow. And you're looking for indentations. Anywhere where you can see a seam mark, where this is nearly at the point where I can net it, that's where you're going to concentrate your effort. So up here, um, if I've got a much flatter head now, I'm just finishing off. Just with this I can use just the weight of the mallet itself and just let it go. That's, that's about the maximum I'd hit it with an LV. 
whereas with a standard mallet I might have to put a little bit more effort into it and really focus on that area and watch where my dent is, get a light source and just compress it down and check with your light source as you go over it. But if you see it starting to open up, just stop going over that area. Uh, if it's opened up because you've hit it too hard too early, then you're just going to have to gently go around the area and compress it down as much as possible, maybe even get some glue into that uh, to, to hold it together. Um, but if you follow the steps and start gently and work your way in, then after two or three hours you should have a bat that's ready to play in. The play in process is basically uh, throw downs or slow bowling with old balls and playing sort of check drives and just checking your bat every so often just to check for seam marks. If you see any really deep seam marks or the, even the, the indentation of the area here around the, the ball or a deep gouge and that sort of thing, or you see that gouge, stop, withdraw the bat, go over it with a, with a mallet and um, yeah, look, knocking in a bat takes time and as much as you can use a machine, the only concern I have with a machine, and I, it's just my thing, is I like to have that gradual progression of pressure as I'm going through. I know it's had 2,000 pounds or whatever of pressure from the roller, but that may have been done six months ago, um, or years ago if I'm buying it for, off, off the shelf. So I don't know the state that, that willow's in as far as dryness or, or whatever. Um, remember oiling, you're not putting moisture back into the bat, you're just sealing in the existing moisture. So I like to start off gently and work the wood um, until it's at the state where I'm ready for it to be put into the nets for preparation. When I do bats for people, that's the point that I get it to. I don't take it any further. I don't knock in anywhere around the splice. Now, the only thing about this is some bat manufacturers will only press to around the splice, so this would be really soft. So when you have a bat like that, you're gently going over and compressing that. Not too hard, you'll crack it, and gently going over it. If you've oiled it properly, then your chance of cracking it should be lessened uh, if, you, if you're hitting it correctly. If you hit it too hard too early, you're going to crack it, just like if you take it into a match. You're going to crack it. You see any bat that says pre-prepared, ignore it. You've got to do the edges. You've got to do this 20, centi uh, 20 centimetres of the bat and all the edges as a minimum. And that's my knocking in guide or my thoughts on knocking in and preparing a bat.